When presented with a threat, the caveman grabbed a rock or a stick and he kept his eye on the threat while trying to hit it. In a fight, you focus on the bad guy and you try to land a kick, an elbow strike or a palm strike. Both are examples of focusing on one focal plane. You're looking at the threat. Iron sights have been around since 1450 and a lot of people have been killing using iron sights. Back then it was a bead and a notch in the rear and that created multiple focal planes. You had the rear, the front, and then the target, so three. Instructors have been telling students to focus on the front sight while blurring the target and blurring the rear sight. We did a video called Debunking Shooting Myths a couple of months ago. We run every tactic, technique, and procedure that we teach through a matrix of three questions, and we'll link that video in the description below. The three questions are, will it work, is it necessary, and can you do it under stress? So run that idea, blurring out everything through this grid. Will it work? Yeah, sure, people have been killing people with iron sights you know, since 1400. <laughs> number two, is it necessary? But let's come back to that one in a minute. Let's answer number three first. Can you do it under stress? Sure. So is it necessary? Let's go back to number two. In other words, is there a better way to engage targets than blurring the back, blurring the problem, and focusing on a piece of iron in the middle? The answer is yes. Enter the age of pistol optics. You've got to wonder with a dot, whether it's a red or a green one, and it's superimposed on it. And whether you line the gun up correctly or not, if the dot is on target and you pull the trigger correctly, you're going to get a hit, assuming your dot is zeroed. This allows you to focus on one focal plane, the threat, just like our caveman ancestors did. There are other advantages too. Most people end up shooting faster, more accurately with an optic. As you get older, it becomes harder to focus on things and the dot also helps with that as well. So today, we're gonna compare three reputable optics, the Holosun 507C, the Trujicon RMR, and the EOTech EFLAX. That's kind of a new one, the EFLX. All of these pistol dot sights are high quality, and we're gonna see how they stack up against each other in the following categories. Footprint, weight, durability, battery life, battery loading, reticle and lens clarity, and then finally, price comparison. And then when we wrap it up, we'll score it, and we'll tell you which ones we like. So let's get started. Let's talk about what you get with the EOTech plastic box, stickers, a manual some Loctite mounting screw, a sight adjustment tool, the device itself, pop the cover off. This is what you got. You know, nice big wide uh, screen, brightness adjustments on the side. It's got a sealed plate on the bottom, a battery loads from the top. The specs on this thing, the length is 1.9 inches. The width running, obviously, that way is 1.2. It is one inch tall. It weighs 1.4 ounces. The reticle pattern is a three MOA dot or you can get a six MOA dot. The housing material this thing's made out of is a uh, forged aluminum. Power for this thing is a, uh, a single CR2032 lithium battery. Take this tool, goes in those slots, and you unscrew that and the battery comes out. And the stated battery life for this thing is 2.5 years. Side adjustment, so you've got your elevation and then your windage. That's the example of the three, three MOA dots. Let's look at what you get with the Trigicon. Pop the box open and nothing back there. Uh, you know, some stickers, mounting screws, literature. Here's the sight. Design of the top here has got a sway to it. That's designed to, if it takes impact, to divert the impact away from the actual lens. The lens has got a, a film on it. You can see there, kind of got a green tint to it. And Trigicon says that they do that in order to help you pick up the uh, contrast of the red dot better. The dot's red, you don't have an option for another color. Uh, and then you get a battery. Length is 1.8 inches. Width is gonna be 1.1 inches wide. Height on it is going to be one inch tall. It weighs 1.2 ounces. The reticle pattern on this is gonna be a 3.25 MOA dot. The housing is uh, ruggedized aluminum, forged aluminum, powered by, it's a CR2032 uh, lithium battery. This is a bottom loader. Stated battery life, four years. Elevation, one click is uh, one MOA. Windage, there, 3.25 MOA, red dot there. What you don't get with this is this, the sealing plate. What this does is it seals 
the bottom because as you saw before earlier there's nothing there protecting um there's a gasket that runs around the whole thing that's what this rubber piece here is but that mated to this uh, helps it maintain um, a little bit more waterproof so that is the trunk Let's see what we got in the Holosun. Business card, cleaning rag, user's manual, two different types of screws with blue Loctite on them, a tool. One end that is for mounting the site. This end is for adjusting your elevation and windage and uh, replacing the battery. So here's the site, the 507C-GRX2. The length on this is 1.78 inches long. The width is 1.15. Height is also 1.15 inches. The thing weighs 1.5 ounces. The reticle pattern, it's interesting. They've got a 2 MOA dot, and you have the option to surround that dot with a 32 MOA circle, or you can remove the dot and just use the circle itself. It's made out of forged aluminum, like everything else. It works off of a CR2032 lithium, goes in the side, it's a side loading battery, and it's got a stated battery life by Holosun of five years. How do they do the five year uh, option there? But you'll notice across the top, they've got a, um, a solar panel up there and that solar panel feeds that battery uh, so that gives you the extra battery life 50,000 hours or five years and the other thing they've built into this shake awake technology and what that means is that if you lay this lay this down don't touch it it'll turn itself off and then the minute you pick it up again it's it's back on your dots functioning and this tool fits in that slot right there and that's how you would adjust elevation windage is adjusted on this side increase the brightness decrease the brightness but it does something else as well three basically three reticle patterns that you can have here so the first one is going to be the two moa dots surrounded by uh, the 32 moa circle all right and then you press and hold And that will change it to a, just a two MOA dot. Press and hold again. And you get a 32 MOA circle with nothing in the middle. The bottom of it is sealed. So that's the Holosun 507C GRX2. The length of the EOTech here is longer than the Trigicon and the Holosun. These, these two have the same footprint. This has the Delta Point Pro footprint. You can mount these on the same weapon. This has to either have an adapter or has to have something specifically cut for the DPP um, footprint. This gives you an idea of the uh, tent that is or is not on the lenses of these. The Trigicon's got a, um, a green tent, reddish pink tent. The EOTech is really pretty clear. They've all got windage adjustments on the same sides here. Holosun's battery comes out on this side. EOTech's battery comes out on the top. Elevation adjustment is the same location for every one of them. Brightness settings for the various models all pretty much on the same side as well. One difference with the Trigicon on the left-hand side of the other two, brightness and dimming capability all on the same side. Trigicon doesn't do that. One large button of, uh, for increasing the brightness on the left hand side and on the right hand side the button for dimming it it helps if you've got gloves on to make sure you're getting it done without having to fight between um, the, the smaller buttons on the other two so here's our preferences everybody's got the rmr except the eotech they're delta point pro the trigicon weighs less than holosun the trigicon is submersible 66 feet underwater uh, but holosun's got five years of battery life and then you've got two guys tied for uh, that category there. And then you've got a clear lens for the EOTech. And then the Holosun has got the lowest price. However, Trigicon is made in the USA, so they win. Y'all come back now. Yeah. This has been a Filmways presentation.